Hi, my name is Maximiliano Ferdman, and I'm a mobile web developer. These days, browsers are supporting new APIs to store data client-side so we can improve user experience, performance, and make our app data available offline. In this course, we are going to start talking about the current state of client-side APIs available in every browser. We will talk about quotas, how to request persistent storage, and how to use different APIs such as IndexedDB, Cache Storage, and the File System API to store data and retrieve that data later in your own web app. I hope you enjoy this course. So IndexedDB stores JavaScript objects and binary data. Cache Storage stores HTTP responses. So a PNG file, a JavaScript file, an HTML file, a PDF file. Web storage, both session and local, are storing strings, just strings. It's also very limited. So if you have ever used a web storage or local storage before, it's just strings. So if you have an array, you have to convert that array into a string, like comma separated or JSON stringify or something like that. So it's, it's limited, okay? And the file system access is working with files. Uh, directly text files or binary files, you have the full API to work with a complete file system. So IndexDB is using a key of a key path on most situations within the object. What's a key path? The name of a property in your object that is the primary key, an ID, for example. Okay? But it can be name, it can be any, any a path within the JSON, within the object that you are saving uh, within IndexDB. On cache storage, the key is the request. Okay, so that involves the URL, okay, but also it can be cookies, the header, so the whole request is the key. So if you want to get an object from the cache storage, you need to provide the request. And the storage will give you, okay, here you have the response for that request. Make sense? That's the primary key. On web storage, it's another string. So the key is another string. So key value, and both are strings. And for the file system access, well, we don't have a key. We just have a path, maybe, okay, for the file that we need to open. On IndexedDB, the data, okay, or the JavaScript objects are grouped in object stores and objects stores are grouped in databases, okay? In the cache storage, it's grouped and in caches. That's the name. In web storage, they are no group. They are just at, at the root level, okay? So you just store keys at the root level. And the same with file system access. In DexDB, you can store JavaScript objects and binary data with a key path grouped in object stores up to the available quota, quota. And this is the first time we are using that term officially. So of course, the next question will be, what's the quota? Uh, stay with me, we will, we will see that. On cache storage, the same. But the web storage, that's not the same. So web storage is not using your available quota. On, on session storage is typically 12 megabytes. And local storage is typically five megabytes. So we don't know the quota, what quota is, but let me spoil you this. Typically today, you can safely store up to a gigabyte per origin without any issue on IndexedDB or cache storage. So five megabytes doesn't seem good enough. So that's another reason of why we don't want to use local storage anymore. And, and it, it, it's even worse. And I will explain why. So those five megabytes are not really five megabytes. I will explain why in a minute. Okay, so remember I mentioned that if you like SQL databases for whatever reason, there are new ideas today that are coming back. So do you see when I use SQL, do you want to create your own API, your own database? API, so you feel you have the knowledge to create a high-performance database and you want to create your own IndexedDB alternative. Well, today, thanks to WebAssembly and IndexedDB and or file system, it's possible. 
So there are currently some libraries that are taking SQLite, for example, that is a C library. So they took the C library, they converted that into WebAssembly module, and then you can run directly SQLite on top of IndexedDB. So then you can still use SQL if you want. Now, the next step is to change the load function. We already have the load function. The load function is fetching the menu from the API and rendering the menu. So we need to change that structure, okay? So it's already async, so that's, uh, we, already, we are already there. So what we need is the database. So we are going to call menu.openDB. And remember, this returns a promise. So we await for it. So we open the database. And here, something that we can use our count to see if, if there is something, because maybe the database is empty. So if it's empty, I, I don't need to load it from the index DB. If it's empty, I need to go to a network. Does it make sense? Because nothing is there yet in the database. So how can we check that? Well, we can call db.count. Count will count the amount of objects or values in one data store. What's the data store categories? Okay, but we need to await for that. Can we await in an if condition? Yeah, we can. These days we can do these things. So if it's zero, it means the database is empty. Okay, DB is empty. So it's empty, I need to go and fetch the data. But instead of saving the data in my array, I'm going to save it in a local variable. So I'm going to the network, getting the values. Now, what do I need to do with that data? Save it, right? So, it, but I mean, I can stringify this, but yeah, we're not going to do that again, okay? Uh, well, I can just save it in one um, object, but I don't need that. I can take my data, my data is di directly, we can call this categories, and for each, so I can execute for each, for each category, I can use a lambda expression here, I'm going to talk to my DV, and go going to add one object in the categories store, and that's the value. I think it's fine, yep. Now, menu.data is not API fetch menu, it's get all, get me all the categories. Categories. Does it make sense? The flow. So using async await and using this wrapper, the code, it's okay, it's clean, you can follow the code, you can follow the flow of thought of what's going on. With the original API, it's because it's event-based, it's actually difficult to, to do something like this, really simple to get. So I think it should work. By the way, this code that we have here is using a pattern that we haven't mentioned in this workshop today. It's called cache first. Why is cache first? So if I do have categories in my, in my database, I'm serving to the rendering the categories from the cache. But what if the server is changing the menu? and not updating the menu. Does it make sense? So this is known as cache first, and uh, it's, a, it's a pattern, okay? You can use it or not, okay? It's a pattern. Just have in mind that with this pattern, once you have saved something in the database, you will use that forever. Maybe you need to add another code that every, every morning or every, every time you open the app, you check with the server, you download the menu again and you up upgrade your database, okay? I will show you an, an another, a second a policy, a second algorithm in a minute. Well, uh, let's see this in action. So, back in my Coffee Masters website, if I reload, so if I go to the console, I have an error. So I think that we have an error with count. 
in line 17. So it's here. I think that the problem is that I didn't return the database. So and I, I should always return the database, so then I will get the database here. Okay. So we have that error there, and now it's working again. How do I know if this is working or not, if it's taking from the database or not first? Let's go to application, IndexedDB. Now I have my new data store, and if I open the, I, I have my, my database and my data store inside, I have four objects, okay? And each object has its array of products inside. We're going to start with uh, probably export, is, so we can actually see if it's working the file, so we can try this. So we're going to create um, a handle, and we're going to, because this is going to be a new file, okay? So uh, we're going to use uh, on the await the show save, show save file picker. We don't need the window actually, right? But anyway. And because it's a weight, we need to convert this to async. And probably we have to do that also on import because the whole API is promise based. And we are not using then and catch, we are using async await. Okay? So show save, save file picker receives an object with metadata. Okay? We need to pass the types of objects that we accept. Why it's, it's, it's plural, so I can actually set more than one type. It's not common, okay? But uh, you can let the, the, um, the system say that you accept, uh, the, us the user can save a text file or a CSV file, comma separated value file, or, so you can send a couple of options, okay, for the user. Or you can say PNG or JPEG or GIF or GIF, and then the browser will show in the, in the dialogue, okay, like several possible options for the extension, for example, or things like that. But typically we have only one, okay? So we are going to pass a description. So we can call, this is going to be a JSON, Coffee Masters, cart, fine, okay? And then the accept will be, it's an object with the MIME type, as the key and an array of possible extensions, like so. It's your list, okay? That's how it works. So that's the handle. So if the user accepts this, then you have the handle, okay? So what you need to do is create a file object that is getting the file from that handle. That's the file reference now. Over that file, you can read or you can write. But in this case, we want to write, okay? So because we want to write, we need to create this other object. So we create a writable. That's the one that, so this handle, it's for read only. And this handle is for writing. Okay, so if you want to read the file, you use this one. If you want to write the file, you take the first one. So now that I have this, I just need to write. So you write, and after that, you close the file. Both are promise-based, so I should wait for the write operation to finish before trying to close it. Um, by the way, I'm not setting the content yet. And what's the content I'm going to write? I can write array buffers. So if I have bytes from somewhere, I can directly write that. Or in this case, it can be text. So I can stringify my cart. Okay, make sense? Those are the steps. If we try this, we can now try to export, that is the download icon, and you can see the first thing that I see is the dialogue. So this dialogue is on the Mac, 
on macOS, it's not showing you a lot of metadata, actually. Okay, on Windows, you see more metadata, such as the name of the type that I'm saving, but that has to do with how the OS renders a picker. Okay? So I can save this as card.json, and that's all. I have the find. Okay? So I can actually look into my desktop, and I have the card.json, 14, 400 bytes, so it's, it's there. Mm -hmm.